Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. This video is going to be a little bit different. The first half of the video, we're gonna be looking at all the comments that you guys have made about several of the things that were in my last previous videos. We're gonna then cover our story for today. And I know lately I've been starting with pictures of Catherine, but this picture above really caught my attention. I had no idea how much Andrew's daughter looked like Queen Victoria. It really is an uncanny resemblance, don't you agree? All right, let's jump into your comments and what you guys think. To start with, I had somebody tell me that she was subscribed to my channel and then all of a sudden she wasn't. And what is happening and why is that happening? And I really don't know why it's happening, which is why I tell people just check your subscriptions on a regular basis. Raj T then checked his subscription and found that he also had been unsubscribed. Peter here has claimed that that's happened to him at least four separate times. He keeps resubscribing, they unsubscribe him and he turns around and resubscribes. Rosemary said that that's happening to a lot of the, the, the um, popular channels that people are just jobbed. You should check your subscriptions regularly. That's what I think. And finally on this topic, Nora said she simply turned on notifications to monitor subscriptions. Um, I think that's a smart thing to do. Don't ask me how to do that. I'm sure if you Googled it, you could probably figure it out. Um, but yeah, people are disappearing without wanting to disappear. So check those subscriptions. Okay, let's move on to our next topic. The next topic was about Mr. Rogan and the fact that he has people on his show on Spotify that are saying everything opposite of what Harry is saying. And the point I was trying to get across to everybody is, if Harry is so much about this is misinformation and this shouldn't be allowed, then why isn't he speaking out? Lots of you had lots of comments about this subject. And I think I did not express myself well when I was touching on this topic. I think the thing I was trying to say to you guys is not that Joe Rogan is wrong, but that Harry has been so much running his mouth to everybody about that's wrong, that's misinformation, you shouldn't do that. But when somebody who is opposite of what he is saying is on the same platform as him, he's not standing on his principles. That's my point. He should stand by his principles. Now, I hope that explains what I meant. I simply meant that Harry's not falling on his own sword like Piers Morgan did. That's what I was trying to say. Now, several people then wrote, well, if the vaccine is working, how come I took the vaccine and I still caught COVID? So therefore the vaccine doesn't work. Wrong. It's, in, it's like the flu in my way of thinking. You get a flu vaccine, but that doesn't stop you from getting the flu. That simply means that if you get the flu, it won't be so bad, it may not kill you. And I think that's the thought process behind the COVID shot. Well, I'm not gonna debate the shot with you guys. You can Google, you guys are ridiculously intelligent and smart. I know that from the stuff you send me in your comments. You can make your own informed decision, but I don't think the COVID shot was ever meant to stop you completely from getting COVID. I think it was meant to just keep it from killing you. And for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know I had COVID, I ended up with double pneumonia and it almost killed me, um, which is why as soon as I was able to, I took the shot. I, I'm not advocating it for anybody else, but that's what happened to me. Here's one of my followers, Barbara Renner, who said that I don't know what I'm talking about and she's done with my channel and my arrogant attitude, have a nice life. And finally, Lucy said that my remarks were idiotic and I have forced her to unsubscribe. People, if you don't like what I'm saying and you're not able to engage in healthy discussions where everybody gets a point of view, pro and con, because I'm not going to censor people, then yes, you should unsubscribe. Goodbye, Lucy. We'll miss you. Have a nice life. You all know that I try to be fair. And since I put that video up, this statement was put out by Archwell. And in the statement, he says that since last year, their company has been expressing concerns to Spotify over the misinformation that what they're calling misinformation on the platform. 
So here's my thought press process on this one. Number one, I think they put out a statement because it was glaringly obvious that they were not addressing the elephant in the room. Number two, I think they went too far with the statement because let's face it, they haven't produced anything in a year. They took Spotify's money and run. Spotify's having to do their work for them and they're telling Spotify to fix their platform. Very interesting. The next thing that I talked about a little bit was the fact that Harry had supposedly interviewed Dodie... Fayed's father um, about the car crash for, you know, his book. Several people wrote in and said, doesn't he have dementia? And if so, it's not really fair to talk to somebody who isn't all there, but then again, neither is Harry. I completely agree with that comment. Naomi brought up a very interesting point. Did anybody consider that Dodie was the target and Diana was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time? After all, the protection officers were Dodie's protection officers paid for by his father. That's a very interesting point of view I had not previously considered. And Danny Kyle remarked that she thinks they're going to blame the hit on Prince Philip. Because after all, since he's deceased, he can't defend himself. Good point as well. On the story that I shared about the L.A. restaurant that supposedly had been offered a royal warrant from Meghan Markle, Aya remarked that even in Asia, she knows that only the Queen and Prince Charles can give royal warrants. And Patsy Pinkney confirmed that. Okay. Cotton Candy said if they're broke, that's maybe how they're eating. And this follower pointed out that royal warrants are given in Great Britain and Meghan has no basis for giving out anything. Good point. Now, when I brought up the story about Cardi B wanting to talk to uh, Meghan Markle, you guys had a lot to say about that too. Meghan doesn't want any negativity. And so she doesn't want to meet with her. You know, just a little off topic, but this subscriber pointed out that when a man leaves behind queen, family, and country, his principles won't be far behind. Excellent point. And that what makes them love and appreciate William and Catherine Moore. I could not agree more. I think that Harry and Meghan's behavior is working in Catherine and William's favor. The next set of comments had to do with my video about the young lady who put up all those tweets and somebody called and got her job, got her fired from her job, which I've told you guys before, I don't think is the right thing. But you guys were once again, very vocal. You guys can freeze the screen to read all of these, but the majority of people felt that calling her employer was the correct thing to do due to non-conforming to their policies, due to the threat of gun violence here in the United States. I mean, Big Spruce pointed out that when you start making killing threats about people, you've got a serious problem. And how many mass shooters or how many mass shootings might have been stopped if people were paying attention? Catherine pointed out that Meghan Markle only has mean girls, so birds of a feather. And Contaflex pointed out that the Markle effect is taking its toll. Lorena Taft pointed out that she left her job, like Harry told her to do. And Blossom, no, I'm not intimidated. Um, I've got some surprises coming for you guys in the next few weeks. I'll let you in on it as soon as it's all taken care of. So the one story we're really going to cover today is the fact that Harry and Meghan got in touch with Tom Holland and it, I believe it's called Zenaida, Zenaya. She's gorgeous. Anyway, people, they, they had a talk with Harry and Meghan and everybody's like, what do you think that was about? What do you think that was about? Here's my opinion. Harry and Meghan have started their own entertainment company and I think they want them to come on board because right now they are hot because of their movie that's out. That's what I think is going on. If these two stars have brain one in their head, they'll say thank you, no thank you, and walk away. Obviously, since every project Harry and Meghan have started has not even gotten off the ground. It's fan update time. It's very cold here. He likes to snuggle up on the couch with my husband and stay nice and warm. And of course, I went over to play with him for a minute. So here's a video. Enjoy. <laughs> Good boy. All right, you guys, once again, lots of information. I would love to know your opinions on your opinions. How's that? And I want to know what you guys think about Harry and Meghan trying to recruit Tom Holland and his girlfriend for one of their projects. 
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell on a regular basis. Don't forget to check your subscription on a regular basis, okay? You know, you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Getter. You can email me. To those who have donated to my coffee fund, thank you guys so much. And as always, have a great day.